Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a favorites video with you guys. So I'm gonna be sharing with you a few of my favorite new products as of late. A couple products that are just sort of okay, but I don't really have anything better to share with you and I just wanna share my thoughts on it. And also a new favorite perfume addition to my collection and my new table and chair set. I'm super, super excited. If you guys are new here, welcome. My name's Alithia and on this channel I do share all things feminine that bring me joy and happiness. So a little bit of organization, decluttering, some skincare, self-care, makeup, a little bit of fashion, um, and even a little bit of self-help stuff kind of just whatever I want to talk about if you enjoy the vibes of this channel if you like coffee and talking about girly luxurious things and you also are on a mission to balance your life and reduce stress and just live the best most chic but simple functional life you can then I would love for you to consider subscribing you can also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram and with that out of the way you guys let's get started in today's favorites video Okay, so my first favorite is the Jizu Honey Infused Hair Mask. So this I almost put in my empties video because I'm almost out. Um, this is a pretty popular product. As you guys can see, I'm almost done. I really like the way that this smells and I actually really like the way it makes my hair feel. So when I first got this, I'm not gonna lie, I think I told you guys I got it because I was a sucker for the pretty packaging and how aesthetic everything about the packaging looks and the brand and everything else. And I got this way back in like September when I was kind of going crazy buying a bunch of Sephora stuff and just kind of indulging in a lot of luxury hair care and stuff like that. And I honestly thought that this might be not worth it because it was quite pricey. However, it is taking me quite a long time to go through. Like I've been using this, I would say almost once a week since I got it back in September, October, and I'm still not out of it. I probably still have a good two uses left in this container. Sometimes I put a little bit more than I need to, and I do use a little bit more just if my hair feels like it really needs a deep conditioning. But I honestly notice a difference in the quality of my hair, how my hair feels. It feels a lot more hydrated. It feels more silky, more soft. Um, I also have the Jizu leave-in conditioner, which I also thought was going to be not worth it. And I also got because of the hype and because of the packaging, but honestly, I really like the leave-in conditioner as well. So I have to say, I really understand the hype with the Jizu products. Yes, they're expensive, but they do, they do last a long time. Like the leave-in conditioner is lasting me forever because I kind of alternate with my more affordable leave-in conditioner and it just, they both just make my hair super, super soft and silky and they don't leave my hair feeling weighed down or heavy. So I have to say, I really, really like it. So this would definitely be a favorite. And I honestly think when I run out of this, I could see myself repurchasing it. I would probably try to get it on sale because it is quite expensive, but definitely like something I could see keeping in my shower using again. I wish I could find, I wish I could say that I had a more affordable option, like something from the drugstore that I liked as much as this, but honestly, like this is one of those products I think is a little bit more worth it. So just a couple more hair care products and then I'll move on to some of the other stuff. So this is the Olaplex number no. seven bonding oil. Honestly, I can't say that this is a favorite. I'm just including it in this video because I don't really have another hair oil to share with you guys and I wanted to mention it. Um, so I like it. I don't know if it's doing a lot for my hair. I'm sure that on some level it must be doing something because it's supposed to be like a really good oil for split ends, helping with hair breakage and stuff like that. Like it's meant to be a bonding oil. One thing I will say about it is that even though it was a little bit pricey, it wasn't too expensive. It's honestly lasting a super, super long time. I just put like a few drops in the ends of my hair. I don't love it as much as my Playa. I will say that like, I'm still disappointed because this doesn't make my hair feel silky or smooth or, um, just the Playa was just so much better. I'm so, so sad that I can't get the Playa anymore. Um, I think that company just doesn't make it anymore. I believe it was under Morphe and I think they just don't make it anymore. So I wanted to mention this. It's okay. I'm not head over heels in love with it. One thing I do appreciate is that it does last a really long time. So it seems to be worth the money. Maybe I'm not using enough of it, but I literally just put like a few drops in my hair um, and it's 30 mils. I think this is going to last a really long time. So hopefully it does something for my hair at this point. I can't really say like I've noticed a difference or anything like that. So yeah, if you guys have a hair oil that you would recommend that I try that is similar to the Playa, something that has a little bit of a scent to it. I do like a little bit of a fragrance in my hair products, something that will make my hair shiny, soft, smooth, but not make it feel greasy. Um, let me know. Cause I can't say I'm like 
super, super head over heels in love, like jumping out of my chair, excited for the Olaplex, but I'm sure it must be helping on some level. All right, the next product is a hair care product. This I can say is definitely a favorite and it's also a repurchase. And I wanted to mention it again in today's video. This is the Kristen S Style Assist Blow Dry Mist for all hair types. It is shine enhancing and says it cuts drying time and heat protects up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I love this product and I use it all the time. And I have been trying to grow my hair out, you guys. Um, if you have been watching my channel, you know that about a year ago, I went through a telogen effluvium where I lost a whole bunch of hair because I had had COVID a few months prior and also a whole bunch of stressful events happen a little bit prior. So yeah, that's like the third time I've gone through a huge hair loss and lost a bunch of hair due to stress or illness or whatever. So I've been trying to grow my hair out for the last year. I haven't gotten a single haircut in a year, you guys. And my hair is longer now than it's ever been. Um, I know that people say you have to go for your trims, but the trouble when I go for trims, you guys, is that every time I go to a hairdresser and I tell them I just want a trim of my split ends, they literally cut off like five months worth of growth. And they're like, okay, now your hair feels so nice and fresh and blah, blah, blah. It's going to grow so healthy. Yeah. If it would grow, but if you would quit chopping it off every time I come. So anyway, it's very frustrating. So I have just not been going for my haircuts and I know that's like against all the rules, but my hair does not grow quickly. Like hair is not my strong point. I like my hair. I have nice hair, but I don't have a ton of hair. Like my eyebrows are fairly sparse. Even my legs, you guys, I only have to shave like once every two weeks. Like I'm just not a hairy person. <laughs> hair is not like my strong point with my genetics. So long story short, I do whatever I can to leave it alone, let it grow. I don't apply heat to my hair all the time, but I do like blow drying my hair. And I really, really like this blow dry mist. So first of all, it smells amazing. It smells kind of like sandalwood. It's like a really pretty sandalwood scented product. And this is kind of like mid to upper range, I would say from the drugstore. It's not really expensive. It lasts a long time. And I just really love it. It's just perfect. Yeah, and it smells so freaking nice. But this just makes my hair soft, silky, shiny. I don't know if it really helps cut drying time. I've never really timed it, but I love the way this makes my hair feel and I just love using it all over. I put a generous amount before I blow dry and I really think it makes a difference in my hair and helps it to feel nice and soft. And it's just like a really nice experience. It's very elegant to use. Um, so yeah, so this is something I keep repurchasing and definitely a favorite. Okay. And one more hair product and then we'll move on. So this is a new discovery for me. This was actually recommended to me by my local salon. I wasn't getting a haircut, but my daughter was actually getting something done. And I asked them if they could recommend a good medium hold hairspray for when I curled my hair. So I was previously using the Kenra medium hold, but I noticed it didn't have enough hold for me. I wanted something just a little bit stronger, but that was still like brushable and soft and wouldn't make my hair crunchy. And this was what they recommended. This is the Redken 12 medium hold brushable, medium hold brushable hairspray. So it says it's a flexible workable spray. And I really thoroughly enjoy this. It gives my hair like a soft brushable texture, but it still adds really good hold. Um, it's much better than the Kenra medium hold. And also I don't mind the smell. The smell isn't anything crazy, but another thing I like about it is, you know, certain hairsprays, how, when you spray them, they kind of like linger in the air and you're more likely to inhale them. I really don't like inhaling hairspray. It really bothers me because I know it's not good for me. So whenever I spray hair, I always try to leave the bathroom and like, I try not to breathe while I'm spraying my hairspray all over me because I don't want to be inhaling it. This hairspray doesn't seem to linger in the air. It just goes where I put it, which is really nice compared to the Kenra, which was like aerosolized the entire bathroom, I feel like. And then I would have to leave the bathroom so I wouldn't be inhaling chemicals because I don't want to be inhaling chemicals. So yes, yeah, so I really like this hairspray. I just like how it sprays. I like that it sprays just where I put it and doesn't fill the entire room with hairspray, if that makes sense. And it makes my hair feel nice and brushable and soft and gives it a decent hold. It also says it's humidity resistant. I've only used it like two or three times, but I really appreciate like the bounce that it gives. And my go-to hairstyle, if I'm not in a ponytail or a bun for like work or the gym, my go-to hairstyle is just like soft, like bouncy waves, kind of like natural waves. And I really don't apply a ton of heat to my hair. I just do like 
I put the um, curling iron on the medium setting so it's not the hottest setting and I just go through and I take probably about five or six bunches of hair put them in waves and spray some hairspray and that is it that's my go-to and I love it so yeah so great hairspray 10 out of 10 recommend if you're looking for a good medium hold touchable hairspray for like soft bouncy waves the next product is a little bit more boring but this is the deodorant I've been using and this is the Dove Nourishing Secrets vanilla and cocoa butter scent 48 hour antiperspirant so as you guys might know if you watch my channel I was using the men's Dove um, deodorant and antiperspirant antiperspirant rather I still think that one works better than this one it's really annoying because the men's antiperspirants are actually cheaper than the women's and they work better it's one of those like I can't remember the term for that when they mark up the price of women's items but it's that um, but I wanted to try this because I wanted to try something that smelled a little bit more feminine and I like to try new things so once in a while I just will get the urge to try something different and I do really like this but I think once I run out I'm just gonna go back to the men's the men's one because it just works better <laughs> and it doesn't make me smell masculine or anything it's the men's 48 hour clean and comfort something or other it's in a blue and gray container and this one's okay the scent is nice um let me see yeah the scent is nice it's just like um a powder powder formulation but yeah once I'm done this I probably won't purchase it again but it's been okay it's worked all right it's I actually like Dove better than like Degree or Secret or any of those other brands all right the next product is a product that I think I've tried before but I wanted to try it again this is the Australian the Blue Lizard Australian sunscreen SPF 50 for sensitive skin and this one is water resistant as well which I didn't even realize when I got it but I wanted to try this because I know that I had tried it once before and it was really good Good, but I ended up going back to my copper tone. I really really like this sunscreen The sunscreen actually has a ton of skin loving ingredients in it. It's hundred percent mineral There's even castor oil in this you guys. It is just such a lovely like skin loving Sunscreen if you have sensitive skin if you're um, Acclimating to retinoids if you have dry sensitive mature skin if your skin tends to be irritated if you get like um, rosacea or anything like that or whatever just if your skin needs a break and you just need a really nice nourishing emollient hydrating sunscreen something that is going to give you that glazed donut plumped up juicy dewy skin look I really really like this one it does have a cast when you first put it on but once you work it into the skin the cast goes away and you just have a beautiful glow about you again sort of like you've applied like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood flawless filter something like that um, and I appreciate that I like when my skin looks hydrated dewy glowy and really really healthy especially because I do tend to be on the very very dry side of skin I'm the type of person who I can apply lots of moisturizer when I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning my skin feels dry again so my skin just gobbles up the hydration especially since I've been using retinoids and I really like this one one thing that has been kind of annoying and I'm not blaming the dog I love the dog <laughs> but one thing that has been really hard for the last few months is because I have seasonal affective disorder going outside in like literally the coldest temperatures like bitter cold like minus 15 to 20 celsius when it's windy and blowing and i live in a very windy location it's all almost always windy here so having that cold bitter wind blowing in my face to walk the dog numerous times a day has not been good for my skin my skin hates it my skin has been like red and a little bit more inflamed a little bit more irritated and just not as happy and i'm sure it's because of the weather this sunscreen makes a really big difference if i just load this on in the morning before i go take ivar for a walk it makes a really big difference um it's like a buffer against the cold dry wind in the morning so this has been really really nice i can't imagine like not going, I can't imagine not putting on a sunscreen like this before going outside in the morning. I always wear sunscreen anyway, but the more moisturizing, the better these days. The next product is a face wash. Now I know that I'm supposed to be on a low buy, no buy and face washes is one thing I wasn't going to purchase unless I ran out like skincare in general. I wasn't going to purchase unless I ran out of something or something quit working for me or I needed something in my skincare routine, but I didn't want to just go crazy trying a whole bunch of new things. However, this I had ordered before I decided to go on a low buy, no buy. And because I ordered it from, I think, style vana or yes style one of the two and they take a little bit longer to ship um i actually completely forgot that i had ordered this and then it showed up like 
I want to say three weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. Um, so this is the Isentry Yamroot Vegan Milk Cleanser. This is so lovely, you guys. I really, really enjoy this. It has a pH of 5.5, which is perfect for your skin. Um, it's a little bit more on the acidic side, but it matches the pH of your skin. Your, your skin's pH is between 4.5 and 5.5, for those of you who don't know. So this matches your skin's pH, which is awesome. It's a really rich and creamy texture, it says, and it protects the skin barrier. I absolutely love this. I don't feel that it gets my skin as squeaky clean as like the Vanny Cream Gentle Hydrating Cleanser or even the Cetaphil. This one definitely sort of almost, I don't want to say it leaves behind a residue because it doesn't, but it just leaves my skin feeling hydrated and soft and supple. So, so pleasant. It also has a very subtle scent to it. I kind of want to smell it. Um, it doesn't really have a strong scent, but it's kind of sticky. Um, how do I describe this? Um, it doesn't really have a strong scent. It just has a very, very subtle, like, just a very subtle, pleasant, um, slightly sweet, milky scent. I don't even think there is fragrance added to this. And it's a little bit sticky. The consistency is kind of sticky, but when you work it in with a little bit of water on your face, it just becomes, it's just like such a gentle milky cleanser. I love the feel of a milky creamy cleanser as opposed to a lathering cleanser or a soapy type of cleanser. And this is just so nice. Really, really like it. I've kind of been going back and forth between this and my Vanny cream and my Cetaphil. And my last skincare favorite is this lotion. This is the Aveeno Tone and Texture Daily Renewing Lotion for rough and bumpy skin. It says it intensely moisturizes, gently exfoliates, and evens out the skin tone. So I really like the packaging, first of all. I like that it's neutral. Um, it matches everything in my bathroom. I like when everything in the house has a neutral tone, as you guys can tell. That is my tip, honestly, if you guys are trying to like, I'm not a professional here, but if you're trying to decorate your house or you want to like get new towels or reorganize or redecorate your house and you want to have a consistent, beautiful aesthetic vibe in your home, my number one tip is to try to get everything in neutrals. Literally, if everything matches, everything looks so harmonious. So everything in my house, my furniture, everything down to my appliances, my pillows, my bedding, my decor, every little thing in my house, I try to get it in a neutral tone, whether it is a shade of gray, brown, cream, beige, white, um, because everything just looks cohesive. So I know that's a bit of a tangent, but it comes right even down to the lotion, like the lotion sitting on my bathroom counter. I want it to be a neutral colored lotion. <laughs> so aside from that, this is a fantastic lotion. I heard really good things about it. This actually has a polyhydroxy acid in it. So it says it has 4% natural polyhydroxy acid. And previously to this, I told you guys I was using the 12%, um, I think it's the alpha. I'm not sure what the brand name is, um, but it was an alpha hydroxy acid lotion. And I would use it a couple times a week. I got it from Amazon. I decided just to go with this because this kind of does everything in one. It moisturizes and it gently exfoliates. And this literally, you guys, my skin has never been so smooth ever. Even with my previous alpha hydroxy acid lotion I was applying a couple times a week, my skin has never been smoother. So I really, really recommend this. Like I thought I already had smooth skin, but after I started using this, literally probably in about two weeks, you guys, I noticed a huge difference. So I use this over my entire body. After I get out of the shower, after I get out of the bath, I use it every single day and I absolutely love it. It is a little bit more expensive in terms of a drugstore lotion. I th and again, because there's been such a huge markup on skincare in the last couple of years, but one bottle of this is about $20, which is kind of expensive for like a body lotion. I try to get this when it goes on sale at Shoppers Drug Mart. So love the packaging, love what it does for my skin. So I really, really recommend this. All right, guys. And the next item is a perfume and this is a Cento Overdose from Zerjaf. So I have gotten a couple of perfumes this year and this is one of the full bottle perfumes that I got. So you guys, look at this bottle. It is absolutely stunning. This is a 100 ml bottle. I got it from Fragrance Buy um, and I paid for it with my own money. And this perfume is fantastic. So one of the full bottles, one of the perfumes I decided was full bottle for this year. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so 
so unbelievably beautiful. It smells even more beautiful to me today than it did yesterday, I swear. Like every day this perfume just grows on me more and more and smells so beautiful. So I'm gonna have to do an updated perfume collection. I will, because I have a couple, like I have actually quite a different perfume collection now compared to even six months ago. It's very, very different. I'm just waiting for the right time. I wanna be in the right frame of mind and I wanna be feeling really good. And I also have one more bottle that I really wanna get. And I feel like once I get that bottle, I will be able to show you guys the updated collection. But I'm so happy with my perfume collection right now. Um, I've really been going in a more different direction than I than what I was doing the last few months. I wanted to go more in the niche direction. I wanted some perfumes that were a little bit more interesting and unique and not your everyday run of the mill fragrances. Gosh, I love this so much. It's so, so beautiful. Like, un unbelievably beautiful. Okay, so the notes that you have here, this isn't a review on this perfume. I'll have to do a separate one, but the notes that you have here are fruity notes, green accord, aldehydes, Egyptian jasmine, lily of the valley, Bulgarian rose, eucalyptus, and pine. All that to say, let me tell you what it smells like. Okay, gosh, it's so, so stunning. So this is a fresh slightly fruity but without going into a fruit basket direction so it's not a super fruity like in your face fruit bowl kind of thing not like an herba pura um so it has a little bit of a fruity touch to it it's fresh and aldehydic mostly in the opening which eventually kind of dissipates and dries down a little bit it still does always smell a little fresh and a little fruity but it goes very strongly in the jasmine direction and also in a green direction it has a really unique greenness about it um and then it has and honestly, I don't know what Lily of the Valley smells like by itself, so I can't tell you if I pick it up in here, to be very honest. I've never smelled it, but Jasmine, I get a lot of Jasmine in here, and it is a beautiful, slightly, almost like an ambery Jasmine, like an ambery vanillic type of a Jasmine. It has a creaminess to it. Oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> like it's fantastic. It smells expensive, it smells luxurious, it smells elegant, it smells bougie. This could be a signature scent. I think you could wear this pretty much all year round, but for me, I think this is really gonna shine in the summertime. I would say late spring and summer for sure. I don't know if I would reach for this in the winter. Winter time, I'm more of a um, creamy, like gourmand, not super gourmand, but more of a vanilla girl. I like my vanilla, my woody, my spices, stuff like that. This is definitely a little bit fresher, but it does have a depth to it. It is a fresh fruity jasmine with a depth, but there's this like clean airy greenness about it all throughout. It's just impossible to describe. One thing I think about the Zerzhov fragrances, Zerzhov is actually one of my favorite fragrance houses, by the way, they're so unique. The quality is unmatchable. They're just all amazing and actually a really good price for what you get compared to a lot of other niche brands. Um, but one thing about Zerzhov is that it's really hard to actually describe how it smells and it's very hard to imagine what it smells like just based off the notes. You really have to smell it. Um, so this was not a blind purchase. I got a scent, a sample, sorry, from Lucky Scent. And at first it came in like second or third place. And I was like, oh, I don't really know if I love it. After trying it on my skin, after wearing it a couple times, after continuing to come back and smell the paper strip, and just like rem the, the user experience of wearing this, you guys, like when you walk outside and the sillage that you get and how it makes you feel and like the beautiful scent bubble you get from this, incredible. And I also um, recently had the chance to smell Ouverture as well as Herba Pura again. I revisited Herba Pura. Um, this is probably my favorite Zerzhov perfume ever of all time, like to this date. So definitely a favorite again i'm not going to continue to go into too much detail because it's this is not a perfume review video but you guys know me so this is definitely a favorite one of my most favorite favorite recent discoveries in general but definitely for perfume i am so happy to have this bottle and it's just such a beautiful elegant shiny bottle and i'm so excited to wear this and it lasts forever so that's all i'm going to say about it in this video that is a cento overdose from Zerzhov. okay the next favorite is actually a complexion product and this is actually a combination of two foundations so this is the shiseido i don't know some people pronounce it shiseido i want, I want to say shiseido revital essence skin glow foundation this is in the lightest color it comes in which is alabaster 110 alabaster and the laura mercier weightless 
um, perfecting weightless perfecting foundation in the shade 0N1 silk. So I already like both of these on their own. In terms of the Shiseido, it's like I said, it's the lightest one. It is more of a skin tint sort of. It it's comparable to something like the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, the Shiseido one. That's kind of how it feels going on. A little bit less greasy, a little bit more of a it has a little bit more coverage than the Ilia does, and it's a little bit less like oily. Um, but the next shade darker was a little too dark, and this shade is just a touch light. I can still wear it, but it is quite light. The Laura Mercier 0N1 Silk is like the perfect color for me. It works really, really well. I absolutely love it. It is one of my favorite foundations. In fact, I would go so far as to say I would go so far as to say that the Laura Mercier is probably my favorite foundation to date. I love the formula. I love how it goes on the skin. It has a beautiful like satiny finish. It feels and looks very natural. It's a perfect shade match for me, which is really important to me to get a really good shade match. But I recently tried putting these two together, you guys, and the two of them together is awesome. It is so good. So a little bit of the Shiseido, a little bit of the Laura Mercier, and I mix the two together and apply it, and it just gives my skin the most beautiful, natural glow. It's so pretty. I still really like using the Laura Mercier by itself, and the Laura Mercier by itself is more of like a full coverage, um, if I wanna go a little bit more glam, if it's a date night, if I just want more full coverage, but if it's like an everyday, um, I just want my skin to look better, like my skin but better, uh, almost like a no makeup makeup day, or something just a little bit more hydrating and more like a skin tint, but still having really good coverage. Mixing these two together is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So that's a new favorite discovery of mine. And I'm not really a fan of mixing foundations together because I find it excessive. Like it would be ideally you could just have one skin product and that would be it. But I don't know if you guys are like me. Some days I want more full coverage and other days I just want more of a light everyday fresh tint. Um, and sometimes I like to experiment. I like to try like different concealers with different foundations and I like to see the results I get with different things. And it's just really fun to me to see what happens in the end and getting a flawless base is like so important to me. The, the most important things to me when it comes to makeup is my complexion and my eyes. So like mascara, mascara and complexion. If I can only put two things on my face for makeup, that's what I put on. And these two together is just a game changer. So if you haven't tried the Shiseido Revitalize and Skin Glow and you want something that's a little bit like the Ilia Super Serum, something along that line, um, I really, really like the Shiseido and it feels very nice on the skin. It's got a lot of really good skin loving ingredients in it. And yeah, again, the Laura Mercier, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. I feel like it's a very under hyped foundation. I feel like it doesn't get the, the hype that it deserves. Cause like for me, it beats out like everything I've tried. I just love it so much. And I wanted to share my favorite blush of the moment. This is not new. I've had this for quite a long time, but for a while there, I was really loving the Dior Rosy Skin Glow foundation in the shade 001 pink. I think, um, that one was like the cool pink Dior blush that kind of went viral. However, I went back to this one. I started using this one again, and I really, really like the natural um, how this is so natural on me. Like it just looks so nice on my skin. I think it's just the powder, the way the hourglass products apply. Hourglass powder products are phenomenal. If you guys haven't tried them or don't know that they are probably the best powders I think you can get on the market. They're so finely milled and so nice. And this is the ambient lighting blush in the shade sublime flush. And I will show you what it looks like. So that is the, the color. It's a really nice neutral pink. It has a little bit of like a coral, um, like a cooler pink, and it has a little bit of this, sorry, not a coral. It has a cooler pink in there and it has a little bit of a coral peachy kind of tone running throughout as well. So it's a really, really good neutral blush. It's not too pink, it's not too orange. I don't look good in an orangey peachy blush and I also don't look good in something that's too purple. I need something that's fairly neutral and also that is like appropriate for my skin shade. And this is just awesome. It's easy to apply, buildable, gives a really nice, like as the name implies, it just gives a really pretty flush of color. Um, and I just have been really liking this. So this has been my go-to lately. This is like currently my favorite, my favorite blush. I think sometimes I go back and forth, like for a month or two, I'm really enjoying a cream blush and then I go back to a powder blush. But this one is just like a 
ride or die, no fail. Like if I'm going on a trip or something and I could only bring one blush with me, I'd probably bring this one because it's so versatile and it looks good in every situation, looks good in every scenario. I don't have to worry about it. I know it's gonna go with my makeup. I know it's gonna match every eye look that I do. So just like a perfect neutral blush. And my last favorite, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is my last favorite in today's video. No, it isn't. I have one more thing to show you downstairs in the kitchen. <laughs> um, this is a makeup product, and yes, I did purchase this. So yes, I did break my no buy, low buy when it came to makeup. I had told myself and told you guys I wasn't going to buy any eyeshadow. Um, I wasn't going to buy any makeup unless something went bad or expired or needed to be replaced. But you guys, I made an exception for this because... I'm all about neutrals and this palette just looked like absolutely perfect for me. And eyeshadow is an area that I struggle in. I struggle to find good colors for eyeshadows because they have to be truly neutral and even leaning a little cool. So when I saw this makeup palette came, come out, I couldn't resist trying it, you guys. But what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna do a one in one out. So if I keep this one, which I'm pretty sure I'm keeping this one, I'm going to pass on my other one, my Gwen Stefani, and give it to my mom or something. So this is the makeup by Mario. This is the Master Mattes The Neutrals eyeshadow palette. This is the brand new one that just came out. And I don't want to drop it, but this is what it looks like. So I probably don't have to review this even or like give you guys too much information about it because it's a very hyped up product at the moment. It's very viral at the moment. Everybody is talking about it and I just could not resist these colors. I mean, they're gorgeous. They're absolutely stunning and I've already used it and I really, really, really enjoy it. I find it so easy to work with like the formula is very powdery and it's not overly pigmented it's a really nice powdery um, consistency very buildable you can create a super subtle look it's easy to blend um, the colors are amazing you can make so many different looks and I myself am personally drawn mostly toward I would say the bottom six colors actually even that color there I quite like. I'm, I'm kind of drawn more to the lighter colors and then I also really like that kind of grayish blue. And I have experimented with quite a few of these colors and they just look natural and stunning. Like I can't help it you guys. I'm a, I'm a neutral junkie and when I see things like this I just am gravitated toward them. So I definitely did break my, my low by no by rule about eyeshadow but yeah, this was worth it. I wasn't going to pass this up because it takes me like, I find it so hard to find the perfect eyeshadow palette. So I was, I just decided to make an exception. <laughs> so if you guys have tried this, let me know. I've been watching a lot of videos on it and a lot of people have been just saying they absolutely love it. I think it's hundred percent worth it. It's also pretty affordable. I would say in terms of like higher end makeup, and you can make like a perfect, easy, everyday look, or you can make something a little bit more glam for nighttime. Um, this shade here is perfect for kind of a blending color slash all over on the lid. Those like three there are great like transition colors or like all over the lid color, whatever you want to do. And I just love it. This is 100%, 100% worth it. I love it. I never tried the original um, palette by Makeup by Mario, and I never tried the ethereal eyes either. Um, but this one just spoke to me and actually like I could have taken just like those nine, you know, like if it had just been those nine, that would have been fine too. I probably won't use the black one very often, but love this. Ivar, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Hey, come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. Pa. Good boy. Who's a good boy? <laughs> who's a good boy? Look at your face. Who's the most beautiful doggy in the world, huh? Who's the most beautiful doggy in the world? Ivar is. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm trying to get aesthetic photos of my table and Ivar wants to be in every shot, but that's okay because he's aesthetic too. <laughs> so this is my last favorite in today's video. Don't mind the counter. I have a whole bunch of dishes and my laptop is up there but at least the dishes are clean. Um, but yeah, so this is my, my last favorite in today's video is my new table and chair set. I am absolutely in love with it. Um, so these are the King Louis dining chairs from Wayfair. If anybody is wondering where this stuff is from, it's from Wayfair. So this is what the chairs look like. 
so beautiful this is in the color linen it did come in boucle white but I didn't want to get the boucle because I thought it might be harder to keep it clean and I thought the boucle might attract hair and fur and dirt a little bit more than these linen ones like the linen ones already need to be kind of dusted and I literally just got them a few days ago and then they have this beautiful um like wooden detail going over the back of the chair I love the shape of these chairs I've always absolutely loved it's this sort of like regal like victorian style look um for a chair i just think they're so stunning they have these really beautiful details here you can see they've got like the little wooden wooden detail super super pretty come out a little bit in the front they've got adjustable bottoms so you can adjust how high or low they are and i just think that they are absolutely absolutely beautiful i wanted a round um dining table set because i previously had a rectangular one and it was okay but for this space i didn't really know where to put it i couldn't decide if it needed to be straight or horizontal diagonal and it just didn't look the nicest it was okay for a while it did the trick for a while but i wanted something different and then the table i went with is this beautiful antique white pedestal table and it's a wooden top and such good quality it was on sale it was very affordable and also from wayfair very very beautiful so the entire set together was less than like it was less than like thirteen hundred dollars or something like that the chairs were on sale i believe they're still on sale you guys and they have a couple different variations of the king louis um the king louis style chairs and they must be in really hot demand because a lot of the sets were actually sold out i was really grateful to get these chairs that were left in stock and they come as a set of two so one set of two chairs and then the table was separate the table does come in two pieces if you end up getting this one the pedestal comes separately and the top comes separately but it all came together within about three days and I was really really happy about that and then on top I just have a vase of flowers which is from home sense quite a long time ago they're actually a really old um, vase of flowers and then of course my beautiful H&M coffee cups and coaster so pretty the other option that i was thinking about for this set was i was actually going to get a brown wooden table that um the table actually would have matched the wood on the chairs those were my two options but i figured and i actually did a poll on instagram and it literally was cut down the middle in half half the people thought i should get the wooden one that matched the wood on the chairs and the other half the people thought i should get the white one at the end of the day i went with the white one because i felt like it brightened up the space a little bit more and i've wanted a light colored table for a really long time i think both of them would have looked really nice but this is the one i went with ultimately in the end and what i like about it is that it matches everything in my space like i said earlier i always try to get everything in neutral themes and that way everything matches no matter what you happen to put in your house everything matches and the white on the chairs actually really nicely matches the white sorry the white on the table matches the white on the chairs so like a beige linen is what the color is called but they're actually like such a nice neutral shade and then the table pretty much matches and so I just think I just think it's perfect the only thing that this space really needs is something on the wall and I have a couple things in mind Okay, I closed the blinds to see if it would show up more true to color so it's not so washed out and that's what it looks like. Another thing I really like is this raised dog food dish that we got Ivar and I think I just ordered this from Amazon but he almost needs a taller one because he's already getting bigger but I really like having a raised dog food dish for him. I wouldn't mind getting um, even a lighter color one and one that's even a little higher off the ground because he is growing and he's getting really big. But yeah, so that is my table and chair set and I'm absolutely in love with it. So that was it, you guys. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my new favorites. And I'll try to link as many things down below as I can, including my table and chairs, just in case you guys are interested in the exact ones that I got, if they're still in stock. And yeah, I'd be interested to know if you guys have any new favorites as well, anything that you think I might like or that I should check out. And I'll see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.